Transit Planner with GMT. I have been at GMT for just about a year and a half now, and I've been working on NextGen for the whole time that I'm here. My name is Devin Mason. I'm a transit planner with Queen Mountain Transit. I've also been here for about a year and a half, um, and my primary function is ridership, um, passenger counting, assessments, um, and then various other projects. Great, so not a large turnout. Last time we had a meeting here at CVMC, I think we had over 40 people show up, so. Um, so luckily Orca is here uh, videoing us today and that will be shared. Um, if you send us the link for this video, I'd be happy to put it on our website afterward. So the agenda is, we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of the project, where we are now. Um, a summary of the changes and then some exciting new um, mobile ticketing and real vehicle location apps that we are introducing in this area. So what is NextGen? It's a comprehensive service improvement plan, which is a lot of words meaning we needed to take a step back and look at all of our service. GMT has been through a lot of changes in the past 10 years. We used to be CCTA in Chittenden County and GMTA in the rural area. They merged five years ago, I want to say. Um, and so we wanted to take a look back. How can we do that systems thinking, system-wide um, connectivity? So the big push with this project is we want to help. It, always the balance in public transit is helping the most people and helping the people who need it the most. Mm -hmm. So with those two weights on the scale, how can we provide the best service to the people who need it and the people who need it most? Of course, always transit agency. We really want to increase ridership and better balance services with demand. So originally this project had different scenarios based on levels of funding. You know, if level funding, 10%, 20% dream big kind of projects. We quickly realized that level funding was the more realistic scenario. So we turned it into phases because we didn't want to lose all that good research we had done. So phase two is kind of a two to three year what additional hours and days can we put on existing routes so more trips more of the time and on weekends and phase three is going to be future expansion thanks dan i think we got some hi there yes i am so phase three is geographic expansion so we looked a lot at you know what little more you know routes, what corridors of activity can we pull into the system? But that's kind of big picture 10 years out. That's going to be based on public interest in the service and funding availability. So this project started in September of 2017. Any project like this, you kind of start with big concepts. So the concepts were serving more people, better ridership, making the system easier to use. Um, and you bring that out for public feedback and you get kind of more specific steps and then you bring those specific steps out and to the public and then you get even a more refined plan. So here we are, uh, you know, three to four months away from implementation and we're bringing these very specific steps out to the public. So the purpose of this meeting is to get your feed, to inform you what our proposed changes are and to get your <laughs> feedback on those proposed changes. So we will be presenting this to the board later this month but what we'll be presenting to the board is this plan with the public feedback about this plan. So there is still room to make those small changes based on your public feedback tonight. <coughs> now the implementation is still a bit fuzzy. Um, the, the, there's a Taylor One Transit Center opening up on Taylor Street currently slated for September. So there's, there's a lot of moving pieces that all need to come into place for this service to be implemented, but we're currently thinking sometime in September is when this is most likely to be introduced. So again, easy to use. One of the things I'll be talking about later is real-time vehicle location with an app that works. <laughs> Better service, single seat service from Barry to National Life on the city route. Um, in the original proposal, we proposed eliminating service to CCV in the pool. You know, we met with CCV, we met with the nature branch, we really heard the comments there, and, and we found a way to continue service, improve service, hourly service all day to CCV what, and what the pool. What pool is that? I, I guess there's like a rec field up there across from the college. Not Hillier. Not, Hillier. Not, Hillier. Not Hillier pool. Okay, I didn't know if you meant first and fitness pool. 
Um, so addition of fixed route service to Hannaford and Barrie, so that's on an extension of the city route. Um, increased service to Hospital Hill area, which I'll be talking a little bit more about in the following slides. Um, Bi-directional service on Airport Road. One thing that we're also looking at is better commuter schedules. Um, we did a really in-depth dive in one of the commuter routes that serves Chittenden County, and we found that just by tweaking a little bit, we were able to increase ridership by 30%. So we're really interested in doing that with this area, meeting with you know business owners and seeing if we can get the shifts to work. But we do need a lot of responses to make sure that we're not gonna disadvantage any riders, current riders, by making these changes. So throughout this presentation, I'll be pushing you to come to our website and fill out some commuter surveys. If you have any interest in those services or use them or know anybody who does, do please share this as possible. <coughs> Another thing that I'll be touching on briefly is an addition of the Berry Link Express. Um, I don't actually have that added to the map yet, a relatively new service. It's very similar to the Montpelier Link Express, but it goes directly to the new um, off, you know, state office complex in Berry and the switch to paratransit. So what is paratransit? Um, currently, it's, an, it's, a, you know, it's a requirement that we provide ADA level of service, um, to, sorry, the same level of service to ADA passengers to non-ADA passengers. How this works, that up to a three quarters of a mile from a fixed route, so not commuters, just fixed route, you know, everyday fixed route, um, the bus will deviate. So the person will call in at advance, there's a limit of two per route, and the bus will deviate up to three quarters of a mile to that person's door. We're moving away from that into paratransit, um, which is uh, <coughs> still the same buffer zone, but it will be a you know, single occupancy vehicle or a little minivan with a driver going and doing. So there's no limit to the amount of deviations that will be happening, not deviations, but trips that are there's no limit to the amount of trips that are happening today but there will be a limit on who qualifies so in Chittenden County we have SSTA and there's a qualification pro process for who can use the service and we'll be implementing a similar qualification process in um, this region not Lemoyle or Franklin Grand Isle just this capital uh, region service district um, unfortunately, we don't, you know, hopefully in the next week or two, we will have that link to how people can start to get signed up. But we have just a brief description here of who might be eligible based on this process. If you cannot independently, except for the assistance of a bus driver operating a lift, board, ride, or disembark from an accessible GMT bus due to a disability, or if you are unable to travel to or from a bus stop or wait a reasonable period of time at a bus stop due to a disability. So since these changes are proposed to happen in the next two to three months, um, we will be, getting, be beginning the onboarding process very soon. Luckily, we did an outreach project with uh, Vermont Center for Independent Living and the Central Vermont Regional Planning District, and we were able to get a really great pool of potential riders and also contact information for a lot of potential riders. And so we're going to be reaching out in the coming weeks and, and starting the onboarding process. So just to go over the route by route changes, I want to talk about a little bit about the current service. So we have, uh, I think, five fixed routes. We have Montpelier Hospital Hill, which travels from Montpelier to the Hospital Hill region. Barry Hospital Hill similarly travels through Barry on Airport Road and then back on the highway. We have the city route and city commuter which is the main commuter between Montpelier and Barry, And we have the Montpelier circulator, which does two kind of funky, it's like a figure eight, does two loops throughout the day. We used to have a seasonal service called the Capital Shuttle, which only operated during the legislative session. Last year, we tried it year round, um, pretty fairly low ridership outside of the legislative session. But that travels just between the state house and national life. For commuters, we have the US2 commuter, which travels up to St. Johnsbury, the Northfield commuter down to Northfield, the link service into Burlington. I feel like I'm forgetting one, but I think that's it. And now the Berry link service, which similarly Richmond, you know, Burlington, Richmond, Waterbury, Berry City.
So some of the proposed changes would be to eliminate 88 Capital Shuttle. We'll be extending the city route. You know, currently city route goes just to Montpelier. And what we've heard a lot of is that we really, that single seat serves us from Barrie to National Life, AKA I live in Barrie, I'm trying to get to National Life. I don't wanna have to get off the bus downtown and transfer. So we're extending the route from Hannaford down in South Barrie up to National Life and back, and it will just do that all day. When do you, when you anticipate that going into effect? So this is all, again, the start date is fuzzy, but September is the most likely start date. And then you've got regular service from Barrie to Hannaford's now? That's a Correct. Proposal. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Route 92, currently there's a midday gap in service. We'd be eliminating that, so it would be all day service. Simplified routing, so we're getting rid of that funky figure eight that it does. You know, if you've ever seen the bus mapping guide, it says loop one, loop two. Um, it's just gonna be a loop now. Service to Northern, Northern Montpelier, CCV, you know, by request up to the North Branch Nature Center, will be provided by an extension of the Montpelier Hospital Hill route. And then we're gonna talk about, we are actually considering two scenarios for the Montpelier Circulator, and we're really interested in getting your feedback on those two scenarios, so we're gonna do a little bit deeper dive later. Route 89 City Commuter and Route 80, again, extended to serve National Life. Um, all trips would serve the Price Chopper Plaza and 45 minute headways all day. Currently, during peak hours, we do have 30 minute headways, but we found that by going to consistent, you know, instead of 30 on peak, 75 minute, we actually can provide more trips for the same cost. And looking at the low pro profiles, there's actually the same, there isn't more demand during peak hours and less in the middle of the day. It's the same amount of demand all day. So 45 minute service all day is what we're looking at now. When you say headway, can you explain the term headway? So headway is how often that bus is gonna show up at any stop. It's just how frequently the bus runs. So that's a that's a uh, sort of a forty five minute cycle. Is it, is it? Yeah. So Hospital Hill, Northern Extension to CCV Pool. This is actually incorrect. It's the city route that would be serving the Hannaford. So for the Hospital Hill area of service, you can see that this is all the same green color. So instead of Montpelier Hospital Hill and Barry Hospital Hill, it would just be. Montpelier Hospital Hill via this region. Basically, what it's going to look like is we're going to have two buses, and all day long, they're going to be just doing this. But when they reach this Hospital Hill region, they're going to be on demand for 15 minutes. So I get on in Barrie, I get in here, and as soon as I get to this bubble, I'm just going to let the driver know where I need to get dropped off, and then I'm either going to call dispatch um, or let the driver know when and where I want to get picked out, up, and they're going to relay that to dispatch. I'm confused. So it's, um, the Barry bus, when it travels from Barry and it goes to Hospital Hill, it travels on the, um, it ends up going down Granger Road, but, um, so will it still take that loop? Um, so our current proposal is to have it just be on this airport road. Airport. But again, in the winter, I understand mm -hmm. that this hill right here is really steep <coughs> and it needs to be rerouted. So that's something we're considering. You do always want to have a route go on the same road both ways. We're not sure that it's possible on this route, so it might continue having that, you know, it heads out this way and it heads in this way. We're not sure yet. That's something that we're working on. But this is going to be similar to how there was Barry Hospital Hill demand response. It's kind of a demand response zone. If any of you are familiar with that region, it's lots of little, you know, well, there's obviously CVMC, the biggest. Um, but there's all these little places that people want to go on kind of gravel dirt back roads. So serving that with classic transit is really difficult because first off, they're small gravel roads. Second off, they're just kind of, they're not in a corridor. They're all kind of spread out in this area. So we feel that by offering this kind of, you know, a start in Montpelier or you stop in Barrie, and then there's these two buses kind of picking people and dropping people off as needed for every, you know, for 15 minutes out of every hour. It's going to be really kind of that better on-demand service for people who, you know, I got a call from a woman who wanted to use the aquatic center, but she lived in Montpelier and the bus wouldn't take her directly to the aquatic center. Now she'll be able to get on in Montpelier and get dropped off and picked up right at the aquatic center. On so, demand, does that mean calling? I've forgotten. Yes. So we'll be using um, dis ahead. dispatch software. But you calling ahead like we do now for if you want to get dropped off at 
First of Fitness or Aquatic, yeah. you call ahead. Is that on demand? So no. you don't have to call ahead to get dropped off because you're going to be on the bus and you're just going to tell the bus driver, hey, I need to get dropped off here. And he'll kind of have oh, okay. in order, you know, th one person needs to get dropped oh, off right. here, three people need to get up. But Sorry. for being picked up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I know you said that you like to stay on the same road going one way in the, the reverse, but um, there are individuals from Northbury Manor that get served this way, but others that will be at Green Acres, which is right off from Prospect, that don't have a direct line to that bus route. I'm just wondering if you had a way that it was more of a loop rather than just up and down the same access that you could actually expand to that location. So I'm not familiar with where that is, so I can't speak to it, but I'd love to touch base with you after and see if there's a way we can serve sure. that, pop, that property. Okay, commuter service. So a couple commuter services um, proposed. One is for Route 83 Waterbury Commuter, which travels between Montpelier and Waterbury. We'd wanna shift service onto the highway from Middlesex to Montpelier. So the original proposal was to switch it to 86 for the whole route and cut out Middlesex, but Middlesex is actually a pretty high percentage of the riders on that route, so we don't want to get rid of service. But the thinking here is Route 2 can be in pretty poor disrepair. It's not a very nice commute, so this way we're not losing any stops, but it's a bit of a smoother ride for that distance between Middlesex and Montpelier. For the 86, we're looking at adjusting the schedules to better balance loads based on commuter surveys. Um, I'm not confident that we have done enough commuter surveys to make sure that we're not disadvantaging anyone. So again, a really big push. If you use the 86 or know anybody that does, do please take the survey. It only takes a couple minutes. For Route 93, the Northfield commuter, there was the original proposal to discontinue the midday trip due to very low ridership. Um, I'm not sure where we are at with that. I know um, there's been a bit of controversy, so I don't feel comfortable speaking to this now but we are in talks with the select board and the town and there's been a lot of public comments. So that's something that we're still looking into. And again, adjusting the times based on commuter surveys. So other changes, we have the 87 Northfield Community Shuttle, which travels down Route 12 and then up to the mall, um, serving a lot of uh, people who need this service once a week just to get to the store. Um, based on public feedback, we will now be servicing the Shaw's in addition to the mall, but you will have to pick either destination. In other words, you can't go to both on the same trip because it picks people up, it drops people off, and then an hour later it picks people back up again. So not enough time to go to both locations, but we did hear that very much they would like to add the Shaw's. So I'd like to talk about the circulator trade-offs a bit more. Again, going back to the conversation we were having before about how it's always better to have service along the same way. So the, oh, I don't know where my slide went, talking about, okay. So my gut is that we're gonna stick with loop service because the trade-off is with a loop, it's just less convenient because you know, if you imagine a circle, I'm here, I'm here, I'm always gonna have to travel around the circle versus a straight line, right? So it's just a little bit harder to get around. You're always gonna have a little bit of a longer commute. Um, but the trade-off is better service. So if you go to the line, you're losing geographic area, but you're getting better service versus having a loop, worse service, but more geographic area. But since the original plan, you know, proposed moving to this bi-directional service, we wanted to give you all the chance to comment. So this is what the loop service would look like. Again, moving away from that kind of figure eight that it was doing before, with the north no longer being served by the loop, it can be served by um, Montpelier Hospital Hill route. Versus bi-directional, where we would cut off service to Hunger Mountain Co-op, Freedom Drive, and the Senior Center, and it would just do this all day downtown. So a better east-west connection through the town, but losing a bit of southern service. So is it the purple line we're looking at there? The purple line, yeah. That would be cut? The purple line wouldn't be cut, but you see this little southern part that goes down to Freedom Drive, Hunger Mountain Co-op. These are the two, two scenarios that we're looking at. So we want to know if you would rather keep Freedom Drive, Hunger Mountain Co-op, Senior Center, Free Prospect, with the knowledge that it's just not as good service on the rest of the line, right? So you don't have that east-west connection. What you have instead is this loop that the circulator is doing. You wouldn't, you would have less service from downtown to National Life because you, because it's going this way. You'd only have service from National Life to State Street 
on this route, that service will be provided by the extension of city route, but I think the headways are, again, it would be 45 minute headways. So going from this would be closer to 20 minute headways. Anytime you're working at National Life and you walk out the door, the bus would come in 20 minutes and you could get downtown. This would look more like 45 minute headways all day. So thanks for only a couple of folks. I'm just gonna go through the rest. And then I thought if there's any comments or feedback you wanna leave about this loop service, um, the best way is to just leave notes on the map and we will be collecting all of those and counting those as public comments. Can I ask a question about this? Yeah. Why was the decision made to go up College Street rather than keeping the Senior Center and the Co-op and Shaw's in the room? Yeah, so we were just looking at how do we maximize service area with a given headway, and I believe the headway was 30 minutes. You know, you're always constrained by how far can the bus get in a certain amount of time and stay on schedule. And so that's really was the constraint with routing. And so you're making some assumptions based on analysis, based on origin destination, based on public feedback, where do people want to go the most? These decisions were based on that and also based literally how many people show up at each stop every day. So Hunger Mountain Co-op, on average, two people. Freedom Drive in the summer average two people, in the fall and winter average three people, Senior Center daily average zero, Three Prospect daily average zero. Rachel, I do have one question. Yeah. With the change to the Taylor Street location as the primary transit mm -hmm. stop, right now it's shown as Shaw's on here. That is incorrect. <laughs> I, know, I know it will be yeah, into the future, but what's the... Um, do you see any scenario where, because this route right now here in the bi-directional doesn't even go through Shaw's, mm -hmm. nor does it show, show going through Taylor Street. So is there like a transfer happening at like people's yeah, so, or what's the, yeah, how do you get so, to a different bus as well? So time? Taylor Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love this one. So Taylor Street is right here yep. and it's, you know, 50 feet or so from State Street. So there is a, this is kind of the most popular stop on State Street. So we foresee if we go to bi-directional, you know, the stop would be here and people could come down here to the buses that are traveling this way on Taylor Street. Yeah, that makes good sense. Okay. Thanks. So I'm confused, but yep. are they still gonna stop at the, the Shaw's is still gonna be there for now? Correct. Okay. So, Shaw's is not a good stop, and I think you've probably all experienced that. Taylor 1 Street is going to be a building. There's going to be indoor waiting. There's going to be, you know, a lot more information available about when the next bus is coming, what the maps are. So um, it wasn't quite clear what the timeline was going to be when these maps were originally made, so I apologize that they don't. All routes are, all routes barring this, barring this, circulator are gonna be traveling through Taylor Street, Taylor Street Bridge in order to serve that transit hub. It's gonna be the Lynx, it's gonna be Greyhound, it's gonna be, you know, Montpelier has a lot of big dreams for this mm. transit hub. But yeah. Maybe, maybe it's too soon to say this, but um, how does a disabled person that got their groceries at Shaw's, I'm hoping they're still going to be able to get a bus right nearby and they may not be able to walk well over to Taylor Street. I mean, I just want to make, I'm concerned with people who have disabilities being able to yep. take, carry their groceries. Yeah, so we do want to serve that population as best we can and that's a good comment. I'm gonna take that to heart. With the move to paratransit, you're gonna, you're, if you qualify for paratransit services, you can take the bus to and from any location on these fixed routes. So you would call ahead, you would schedule when you want that pickup and when you, you know, when you want to get dropped off at Shaw's and when you want to get picked up at Shaw's. So it'd be that door to door service and you, you wouldn't be walking anywhere. You wouldn't be getting on these main fixed route buses, in other words. And that would be like a first come, first serve, like, um, be, because there might be a lot of people needing to utilize the calling and setting it up. So if, uh, you know, there might not be access for a person on a certain day if there's other people ahead of them. Yeah, so I apologize, I'm not 100% on the ADA requirements, but I believe it is, we have an hour 
or two window to meet all demands. So there's no waiting line. In other words, if, if we switch to paratransit, then we will provide this service as needed. And one difference with paratransit is as long as you call the day ahead, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be two days ahead. Um, if Green Mountain Transit's normal end of calling time is I'm just going to figure out 4 yeah. 30, I can't remember. As long as you call by then, you can if, if you qualify for paratransit, you can get picked up at whenever the bus starts the next day at six o'clock. Oh, okay. Um, it's a very and short. It will be uh, not a bus, though. You said it'd be vehicles. Wait, whatever, whatever the person needs. If they yeah. need an accessible vehicle with a wheelchair, that's what would come. Okay. If they don't need that, something mm -hmm. else would come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, question in the back? No? Okay. You know, I'm just curious, what's the yellow route or the yellow line? The yellow route is the city route. Okay. So that's Montpelier to Barrie, and here right. you can see we've extended it up to National Life. Okay, so some exciting new things is updated bus mapping guides. Here's just an example of what the new bus mapping guides look like. We've moved to this version in Chittenden County. We'll be moving to this version in this region. Um, you can tell that there's just a lot more context. And to be honest, this one isn't finished yet. There's still a lot more detail that needs to be added, but I wanted to use an example from this region for this region. So uh, another thing that we're looking at is I think there's enough space to put every single stop on this map. So you don't have to be so familiar where you know where every bus stop is. There'll be these maps in the bus mapping guides that let you know where you can and can't get picked up. Is this the future route in September or the existing route? This is the proposed future route that goes from National Life and the extension down to Hannah Grave, yeah. And then along that route, if you wanted to be dropped off in other locations, you just tell the bus driver. So for example, um, if you are on that section by Hannaford, but you want to be dropped off at the city pool, because in the future, you know, there might be more of a demand for that, mm -hmm. or uh, Barry Internal Medicine, because that is, you know, the proposed location where the merged two locations for um, the Granite City practice is going. Yeah, so there will be stop here where the medical center and the pool is. We're looking at putting a stop in here by the high school, but it's, that's a pretty tricky. There's a bridge, there's not a sidewalk. So we're, we're thinking that the Dollar General might be the closest stop there. But this, so generally transit maps, these are just time points. Since there isn't enough space, this doesn't, so what we're looking at is putting all the stops in if, if there's space. It's always that balance between enough information and too much, um, but definitely more information than the old version. Just one other question. You you said there's service now to the Hannaford's, but is that daily? September, right? September. Well, I thought somebody made a statement that there's service to Hannaford's now. There is not current fixed route service to Hannaford's. There is a shopping shuttle, yeah, okay. which is that's, that one a week that goes yeah. down to Williamstown. But the proposed would be fixed route. Correct. Okay. Yep. That's the clarification. Of the so other technology improvements. Um, and let me preface this by saying we're not taking any options away. Cash fare, buying tickets, all bus mapping guides, we're not taking any of that away. But we are trying to add, again, a big push, make it more convenient, make it as easy as possible for people to use the bus. The state contracted with a company called Transit, and you all can download this app now called Transit, for real-time vehicle location. I'm at a stop. When is the next bus coming? It'll let you know. And I don't have the picture. Maybe I do farther down. Nope, I don't. <laughs> I used to have a picture of what the app would look like, but I, I took it out. Um, so there's an app called Transit. I highly encourage you all to download it if you are a smartphone user. Um, right now, we have mobile ticketing. They're not the same app, but in the upcoming months, it'll all be in the same app. So it, you know, if you have the app on your phone, it pops up, there's a little bubble in the corner. It says buy a ticket and you can just buy a ticket. Um, that's really great for people who don't carry cash, which is more and more people these days. You don't have to plan ahead to ride the bus. All sorts of ticket options will be available. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to buy a ticket for someone else and send it to them using text messaging or email. So, you know, if you want to buy a ticket for your friend or your uncle, or if you're throwing a conference at CVMC and you want people attending the conference to be able to ride the bus, that's a fun function of that as well. 
So feedback, again, the reason I'm here is to get your all's opinion on this proposal. So we can be reached at feedback at ridegmt.com. If you want to view this more in detail, you can go to ridegmt.com slash nextgen, um, where there are also commuter surveys available. Again, if you ride any of the commuters, please do take the survey. Um, so that's all I have. Yeah. Is it time for questions? Yeah. OK. So I take a bus from Montpelier to the complex in Waterbury. OK. And I'm, usually, I'm picked up at the Department of Labor. And I heard that it's going to, they're not going to go to the Department of Labor anymore, which I think we're, we're getting more people now to, to take the bus mm -hmm. to the complex. And so why are you going to get there? Right there? So it was part of the original proposal to remove service to the Department of Labor, but we are not removing service to the DOL. So the bus will still serve the Department of Labor Park and Ride. Oh, yeah. so you changed the map. Yeah. Cool. There's maps over on the side that show the, the yeah. two proposals. So now I think is a good time if you all want to engage with the maps and you have any specific questions. Um, that's, again, a really great way to leave comments. Yeah. Um, one thing with the, with the new Barry Link that I've got some feedback from some people on um, if, if people, you know, not necessarily, you know, who can say, or living right in downtown Barry, who can walk to catch that link if they want to go to Burlington. Um, so there, there's no park and ride somewhere near. It's, it's a major issue in terms yeah. of trying to utilize that bus. And I don't know if anybody's tried to come up with some ideas yeah. around that. I mean, so one thing that we are looking at is it can it serve CVMC? Um, I know there's a park and ride at on Payne Turnpike, but it's like at capacity. Um, so that is something that we're looking at. You know that 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 route was developed really quickly because V Trans had to move out of the National Life offices. Um, but it's a really good service, and so it's in it it's in its infancy. So we're definitely still <laughs> looking at how to make it more usable for folks. Yeah. Are there any drafts of um, the time intervals, like the proposed schedules? Because that would make a difference for me about whether I could switch. Yeah. So there are kind of when a service starts, when it ends, and headways are all available online, route by route. You can kind of click through and see. Okay. And so if you, you know, you don't if you just go to ridegmt.com, it's kind of that big splash page at the top. You can just click on that, and it'll take you here for more information. Does, does this presentation show up also on the Ride GMT? Or? It's not there yet. We, we will be posting okay. it later. Yeah. Rachel, are there paper surveys available? Because I'd be happy to put them in our waiting room. Yes, that is good to hear. And I have PDF versions of all oh, of them. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. So I'll get your comment. Okay, yes, that's great. Does the Berry Link stop in Montpelier or is it direct to Burlington? Direct to Burlington. Does it stop in Waterbury? Yes, Waterbury and Richmond. Again, a, a park and ride that's at capacity. But yeah. Yeah. So speaking of the, I mean, the, um, that park and ride on Payne Turnpike is proposed for expansion. Yeah. Um, and I think a someone parking there for a trip to Burlington would make a lot of sense. Yeah. So good. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we can fit that in the schedule. That's yeah. the only thing. So the route, you know, is successful and the park and ride is expanded all at the same time. So two questions. The first one, we had a presentation from the Central Vermont Medical Center about the combination of the two facilities, the uh, Grant Practice and um, very internal medicine. Um, the discussion was that before that happened that there would be more uh, route the on-demand services, and I don't know if they've discussed with you about providing those on-demand routes. So I did read a statement in the Times Argus about this changing, and that was the first I heard of it. I, I don't know of anyone that we've spoken directly to with them about this issue. Okay. But fortuitously, there will be service now to that with the extension of the city route down to Hanover itself. And the second, I'll wait until the end, because it was more of just going over that route to see if there could be a way to add a, um, a spot on Prospect Street. So. Okay. Great, so it sounds like we've got a couple of conversations we want to continue. In the meantime, again, if you want to engage with the map, if you want to leave comments, I also am going to take my business cards out if you guys have any follow-up questions after.